Hello, welcome to Zygma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. Today we want to talk about linear momentum. And when we talk about momentum, we are talking about impact. That is for a layman's understanding or choice of words. Linear momentum talks about impact. However, I want to show you this little clip for you to understand. Look at this. See the car? The car is moving and it hits the wall. You see that? And it makes an impact. So there are a lot of things we can consider on this thing that is happening on the screen as you're seeing the car moving. I don't want to go into talking about the speed, the started speed and the final speed, no. The only area I'm talking about is the mass of the car and the wall which the car hits. That is what momentum is talking about. We will come to that, but look at this again. Look at another kind of impact. Have you seen that? Two bodies going and hitting each other. That is what I mean by the impact. However, the major definition of momentum is said that momentum is defined as the product of the mass and the velocity. The product of mass and velocity. Now look at this. What I mean is momentum, some textbooks use different um, notations. P, some use P. So they say that momentum is MV. So we are talking about if this is a body, M talks about whether it is 50 kilogram and whatever and then the velocity it is using to move so the velocity could be at this point let's say five meters per second so this is what momentum is talking about for a physicist so it can be anything even accident collision all these things are associated with momentum however for you to really consider what momentum is talking about as a physicist, you have to consider that what is the mass of the body and what is the velocity applied. Now listen, if you can use ordinary pen, ordinary pen and heat on your body, do you feel the impact? Okay, if you do it slowly, the speed is very slow like this. Will you feel the impact? Now, when your speed is high, you feel the impact more. Why? Because the higher the speed, the higher the momentum or the higher the impact on your body. That is what momentum is all about. And there are also other kinds of momentum, but then what we are concentrating on this lesson and the scope of this lesson is linear momentum. And the screen is also already there telling you that there is a started speed, that is initial speed, and the final speed. Boom, that is it. Let's move on. Now, like I have I said before, momentum is the product of mass and its velocity. So uh, this particular clip or the video you're watching, we'll talk about it when we go into what is called conservation of linear momentum. However, I have defined momentum. Let's talk about impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is talking about the, the tendency for a body to react immediately for a force applying on it. But mathematically, when we talk about impulse I, this impulse is used I to be represented with I, and it is given as force times time. Like I told you before, is the tendency or the readiness or how fast a body reacts to any change or any force on it. Once you touch a body, it reacts. You are talking about the impulse. Another word for impulse, is called change in momentum. And how did that come about? Because if you go into law of motion 
um, second law of motion, which talks about momentum, it says that, that the force applied on the body is directly proportional to, is the rate of change in momentum, which is mv minus u all over t. So this force is directly proportional to this change in momentum. Now, if I remove this alpha, this sign of proportionality, I will say that f is equal to km v minus u all over t. So if I call k to be 1, that is unity, therefore, I will clear this fraction. I have f t is equal to m v minus u. So this is saying that this is called the change in momentum. Very important because wire jump and many other exam bodies, they concentrate much on this change in momentum. So change in momentum is something as impulse because everything here is ft and that ft is the impulse and is the same thing as change in momentum. What do I mean by change in momentum? If I open this bracket, I'm going to have mv minus mu. That means momentum after and momentum before. If you sub subtract the two of them, you have what is called change in momentum and that is the same thing as impulse. Now, let's look at the first question on this body. You say that a body of mass 3 kg, look at this body. The body is 3 kg. What happens to the body? Moves with a velocity of 10 meters per second. They say calculate the momentum. So this body is moving with 10 meters per second. So momentum is mass times velocity. So momentum is 3 times 10, and which is 30 kilogram meters per second. So this is SI unit of momentum, very important. SI unit of momentum, kilogram meter per second. Now, the second question. The second question, the momentum of your body moving with a velocity of 5 meters per second is 25 kilogram meter per second. What is the mass of the body? Now, momentum is mass multiplied by the velocity. Now, the momentum is given. Look at this. How do I know that the momentum is given? Because momentum is measured in kilogram meter per second. So whenever I see this sign, I know that I'm talking about momentum. Therefore, this momentum, which is P, is given as 25 kilogram meters per second. And meter per second is talking about velocity. So V is 5 meters per second. If I substitute this in this relation, I have that 25 is equal to mass times 5. So if I, if I make m the subject formula, I say that 25 over 5 is 5 kilograms. So that is the mass of the body, given the momentum or the impact made and the speed of which the body is using to, to move. Now, I, we've talked about the is imp impulse of a, of a force is defined as the product of the average force acting on a particle and the time during which it acts. So the instant or the tendency for a body to react immediately to a force applied is the impulse. And I also told you that impulse is another thing for changing momentum. Now, let's look at this body. A stationary board is hit by an average force of 50 Newton for a time period of 0.03. What is the impulse experience? So impulse I is given as force times time. So the force is there and the time is there. So when you have impulse is 50 multiplied by 0 0.03, impulse is given as 1.5. So what formula, what should be the unit of impulse? Force is in Newton and time is in seconds. So Newton seconds is the SI unit of impulse. So now, very important, any time you solve a, a, a quantity or a problem in mathematics, you must always use the, the unit. Very important. If you don't put NS, you will not be able to know that you are talking about impulse. If you put kilogram that you know you are talking about mass. Let's move on. Now, when taking a penalty, that's my favorite football, when taking a penalty, a footballer applies a force of 30 Newton for a period of 0.05 seconds. If the mass of the ball is 0.075 kilogram, calculate the speed with which the body moves off. Okay? All right. At this point, you must consider 
that the this is given as this. And then when taking a penalty applies a force, a force is 30 newton multiplied by the time is 0 0.05 is equal to the mass of the body is given as 0 0.075 multiplied by change in speed. Change in speed. So we are looking for just the speed. So I'm going to say, remember that change in speed is something as speed. You know, change in speed. So in this case, instead of writing V minus U, because we are not considering the initial and the final, we are just considering the speed. I'm going to remove this and put change in V. So this is going to be change in V. All right? So that is going to be my change in V. So at that point, change in V is still V. Remember, if you change of money, it's still money that is left at the end. So when we multiply this, we have, okay, we have zero, change in V is going to be 30 multiplied by 0 0.05 all over 0 0.075. So change in V is, let's just do it, 30. So uh, when you do that, you now have 20 meters per second. So that is the change in velocity. So the speed at which the body moves is that 20. All right. Now, at this point, we are going to talk about the principle of conservation of momentum. There are a few principles of conservation. All right. We have energy conservation. We have principle of conservation of momentum. And we have many other kinds of conversation, um, co conservation. But then, when we are talking about a conservation, we are talking about the fact that, looking at the screen, they say that momentum before equals momentum after. That means whenever two bodies collide, like these two bodies now, when they collide, that the momentum or the impact they made at the point of collision is the same thing is the same impact they made after they collided. Once they collide, they have the same thing. And that is the same thing on the principle of co um, conservation of momentum, which says that the principle of conservation of linear momentum says that if two or more bodies collide in a closed system, when we are talking about closed system, we are talking about a system, something that happened without external influence, without force from somewhere else influencing what is happening. So we are just looking at two bodies colliding without something aiding it, without a help from another place. That is what we mean by closed system. A closed system, they are shut out from every other influence. So when they collide in a closed system, the total momentum before is the same thing as the total momentum after. Now, you have to, you have to memorize, you have to memorize this. It's very, very important. And I'm going to take you through the calculation, one after the other, how it is applied. Now, at this point, I'm going to give you just a general formula for momentum. Look at what I mean. Let me go back to, uh, leave all this formula. Let's go back to what happened here. And we're going to use what is happening here to generate the formula for conservation of momentum, then we'll take it up from there. Now, let's look at the first thing that happens. Look at the body. When the body was, let's start. Look, this is before. Now, look at, we have a body. This body is going this way. And we have another body moving this way. Remember, this is a vector. This is a vector and the speed, I mean, the, speed, the velocity is there. So I'm considering the velocity as a vector. So if I'm considering it as a vector, I must consider the direction. However, I don't want to go there yet. So look, look at what I'm saying. This is the mass, M1, as you're seeing on the screen, and the other one is M2. So what happened? Before, we have V1, VI. OK, let's look at when. OK, that's V2, I. OK, V2. Let's call it. Okay, V2I, yes, 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 V1I. You know why I'm calling V1I? That is, 
initial speed, that is the speed before the collision of the first body, that is V1i. Initial speed of the second body before collision. Now, what is the momentum before? For this body, now let's, let me use this place as the positive x axis. <laughs> okay? Okay? Let me use this place as my positive x axis. So if I'm using that place as my positive x axis, and this is going in, in this direction, I'm going to use it as my negative x axis. So I'm going to say V, um, this is going to be negative, negative, and this is positive. Remember? Now let's go. What is the momentum before? Momentum before is that um, M1 VI1 plus bracket M2 minus V2I. This is momentum before. That is before the collision. Then I have M1 V1I minus M2 V2I. So this is momentum before. Now remember that why did this change to plus? Because some of you will say the formula you have been seeing in your textbooks is plus. Why am I going with minus? Because the body is moving opposite to each other according to the vector principle. This is a vector. It's moving in negative x axis. That is why I put this there. Now if the two bodies are moving in the same direction, I, did, I don't have to put this negative sign. However, let's move. Now after collision, what happened? Look at this is before, after collision, M1, yes. After collision, let's say after collision. Why, why did I write MD? Before collision. So after collision, what happened? After collision, this same body will not change. The body will not change after collision. What will change is the speed at which they move after they collided. And I'm going to say M1, V, 1f you know the final velocity this final velocity this initial velocity then so after collision what happened they move opposite also so the uh, after collision this one move this one move this way and this one move this way so their velocities are also going to be in that direction so but then f f2 is moving in the positive x axis so i'm going to say F two F minus M one now is moving in the negative x axis. M this is two M one V I F. So this is what happens after the collision. This is what happened after the collision. So according to the principle of momentum, it says that after the collision, that the momentum before must be equal to momentum after. Therefore, I'm going to have M one V Y minus m2 v2i is equal to m2 v2f minus m1 v1f. This is the formula for momentum according to the principle of conservation of momentum, according to what I have on my screen. Because this may not tally with what you have in your textbook. Now let's look at this. However, according to what you have in your textbook, look at this. They usually say M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. This is what you have in your textbook. And this is not different from what I did earlier. Some other textbook may not use 1 and 2 because this means the first body, second body. Initial speed of the first body, initial speed of the second body and so on and so forth. Let's just use them and apply them in problem solving to be able to master the principle. Now, look at the first body. A bullet of mass is horizontally shot into a, a body moving. If the both bullets move, okay, look at it. A bullet of mass, no? Okay, let's first talk about, I won't solve this for one reason, is, um, talking about third law of motion, and until I treat it, we won't look at it, but then let's look at what I mean by collision. Remember, collision is a phenomenon which occurs when two or more bodies suddenly meet or come in contact with each other. Basically, there are two types 
elastic collision and inelastic collision. Remember, we've talked about principle of linear momentum, principle of conservation of linear momentum. We are talking about the collision. We said there are two major kinds of collision. Number one is elastic collision. Now, look at what I mean by collision. This is just what I mean by collision. Two bodies hitting each other. However, you can also use this as example of collision. Look at this. This is a collision. Now, we said that there are two of these kinds of collision. In elastic collision and inelastic collision. What is elastic collision? Elastic collision is a type of collision in which both energy and momentum are conserved. What do I mean by conservation of momentum? That means it does not change. When we talk about conserve in a normal English, we are saying that something is kept the way it, it is needed. You conserve food. You don't allow it to, to change or rot. So in physics, when we're talking about energy conservation, momentum conservation, we are saying that momentum before is the same thing momentum after. So nothing changed. The same value before is the same value after. So, and they are the same before and that is after. Example of this kind of momentum include this, this example of elastic collision. So when two things collide, they move in different ways, no specific direction. So when two things hit, they move. And the other example include the collision between a smooth bead ball or a tennis ball. When you hit a tennis ball on, the, on, on your button on the table, it moves anyhow. That is called perfectly elastic collision. Now, this is the formula for uh, this is the formula for elastic collision, which is I gave you m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 u2, um, v2. So this is the formula for elastic collision. However, this plus this is just a general formula. Something may happen, especially when the body moves opposite to each other. You can change their signs because their velocity is a vector. Let's move. Now, uh, there is another one called inelastic collision. Uh, let me show you. Look at this. Inelastic collision. In this kind of collision, when the two bodies meet, instead of going separate ways, or going, yes, instead of going separate ways, they collide together and move with, with, with the same velocity. So example of this kind of collision is, let's say, a very big truck and a very small car. What will happen when they, when they collide? Do you know that the very big, big truck will push the car and the two of them will move. You just keep pushing it. So that is an example of inelastic collision. And in an inelastic collision, something happens. And that is why in an inelastic collision, we say that energy is not conserved. That means energy after collision is not the same thing as energy before collision. Now, in inelastic collision, this V, V1, and this V2 will be the same. Therefore, V1 is equal to V2. And let me call them V. So in an inelastic collision, this formula is going to change from V, M1, U1, M, M2, U2 is equal to M1, V plus M2, V. So V is V, you factor them. So mass of the first body, initial velocity of the first body plus mass of the second body, initial velocity of the second body is equal to, is equal to V of, that is the speed of the two bodies, the final velocity of the two bodies, bracket M1 plus M2. This is what happens in an inelastic collision where the two bodies move with a common velocity or speed. Now, we, we, like I said, in elastic collision, momentum is, is conserved, but energy, that is, when we're talking about energy, we're talking about especially kinetic energy is lost. It's not conserved. What, what do I mean? If the kinetic energy before is 20 joules, kinetic energy after will never be 20 joules. They will not be the same because of the energy lost in the speed when the two bodies combine. All right, let's look at this example. Yes, let's look at this example. A, a ball of mass, 0 0.5, moving at 10 meters per second, collide with another ball of equal mass at rest. Good. See, the first body is moving. 
and this is 0 0.5 kilo, kilogram. The, the body is moving with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Now, look at what that means. M1 is 0 0.5 kilogram. U1 is 10 meters per second. That is the mass of the body and initial speed of the body. Now, what happens? It hits a wall. It hits a wall. Not a wall, sorry. A, another mass, sorry. Another mass, not a wall. According to the question, so the two of them now hit another body. And that body is the same mass, they say of equal mass. But it is at rest. Initial velocity is zero. The body is not moving. Initial velocity is at rest. Therefore, M2 is 0 0.5 kilogram. Then U2 is zero. That is, initial speed of the second body is at zero. Now, let's talk about momentum before. Momentum before is M1 U1 plus M2 U2. So, and that is going to be 0 0.5 times 10 plus uh, 0 0.5 times zero. Everything here is going to be zero. We have five kilogram meters per second. This is called momentum before. I have gotten my momentum before. So now what happens after the collision? When they collided, after collision, what happened? If the two bodies move off together after the impact, that is after the collision, calculate their common velocity. So when the two of them hit, this one and this one hit, they now move with a common velocity. So what is going to be the Momentum after. Momentum after is going to be M1 V1 plus M2 V2. But look at what happened. They move off with the common velocity. So V1 and V2 are the same. I'll say V1 is equal to V2, and that is V. Therefore, M is 0 0.5 plus another 0 0.5, all multiplied by V. And 0, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1. Therefore, that is 1V, which is equal to V. Now, momentum before, this is, this is momentum after is equal to V. Now, momentum before must be equal to momentum after. So we say that, we say that P, we say that PB is equal to PA. Therefore, V is equal to 5 kilogram meters per second. This is the, sorry, is velocity. Velocity is meters per second. Okay, let's go to a second question. I don't want to talk, talk about the bullet. Okay, a body of mass, okay, let's just solve this. The mass of the body, the mass of the body is five kilograms, so this is five kg and moving with a velocity of 30 meters per second. Collide with another body, Q. Mm. OK, let's say this body is P. P. Collide with another body, Q. Moving in opposite direction. Very important, opposite direction. So uh, this body is moving in the opposite direction. And this body is called Q. And then, what is the mass of the body? What is the, okay, we are looking for the mass of the body. We are looking for mass of Q. So this is P. Then, what is the movement? What, what is the body moving? It's moving with minus 20 meters per second because it's moving opposite. Now, if the body, if both bodies now move in the direction of P, okay, this is before. Then after happens, after happens that they all move in this direction. That means, uh, that means the mass of P is very, very big. So the two of them will now combine and move in the direction of P, in this direction, positive x axis. So Vx, I don't want to confuse you with those parameters. Let me just say V, which is the common velocity. 
we now say calculate the mass. Now I'm going to still do it bit by bit. I like to do them bit by bit for you to master. I'm going to first calculate momentum before and momentum after. Momentum before is this. Mass, uh, this is five. Should I give you formula? Let me say MPUP plus MQUQ. But then, because they are moving in opposite direction, I'm going to put minus. This is called momentum before, right? Now, let's put this. The mass is 5 times 30 minus. The mass, I don't know the mass of this, um, the second body. That is actually what I'm looking for. And then times 20. So this into this is 150 minus 20 m cubed. This is momentum. This is momentum before. Now, after the heat, ma, um, 5p, that is 5 kg, that is p, and then uh, mass of the cube. When they heat, they move with a common velocity of 10. So that is 10 meters per second. Now, when they move together, what is going to be the momentum after? So, momentum after is going to be 5 times 10. Plus, remember, why am I putting plus? Because they are moving in the same positive direction. Um, positive x direction. The mass is m q times 10. So this is momentum after, which is something I'm saying 50 plus 10 m q. This is the momentum after. This is the momentum before. Now, according to the law, the principle of linear, according to the principle of conservation of linear momentum, before must be equal to after. So I'm going to say PB must be equal to PA. And that is something I'm saying. 150 minus 20 MQ is equal to 50 plus 10 MQ. Now remember, minus we go this way, plus is coming here. So we have 150 plus 50 is equal to 10 MQ plus 20 m q and this is 200 is equal to this plus this is 30 m q so so the mass please take it here the mass of the second body is going to be 200 divided by 30 m q is 20 over 30 kilogram so this is the uh, this is the solution this is the mass of the body for the whole question. All right, we've come to the end of this class, but before we go, we are going to take a few of other questions from Exam Guide app. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's get started. All right, we have a question here. I said, in an inelastic collision text, uh, this is jammed. Okay, an inelastic collision takes place between balls of known masses just before the collision, one of the balls is moving with a known velocity while the other is stationary. Which of the following physical quantities can be determined from the given information? Kinetic energy of each ball, uh, kinetic energy of each ball after collision. What was that? Then mutual forces exerted by the balls, total momentum of the two balls after collision. Which of the following physical quantities can be determined, okay, from the information? Kinetic energy of each ball after collision. Of course. The total momentum of the two balls after collision. Speed of each of the balls after collision. Okay, so we can determine the total momentum. We can determine the total momentum. We can, the answer is A. Because you can find the kinetic, kinetic energy after collision. Of course, you can do that. Mutual forces, no speed of each of the ball. Total momentum is my correct option, please. Total momentum of the two balls after collision. Yes, total momentum is the right. Let's take another one. Uh, a body of mass 5 kg moving with a velocity. We just solved this. A body of mass 5 kg moving with a velocity of 10 meters per second collide with a stationary body 6 kg of, of mass. If the two bodies stick together and move in the same direction, 
after collision. Calculate their common velocities. Okay, let's do this one. So M1 is 5 kg. U1 is 10, 10 meters per second. Then M2 is stationary. So V, U2 is 0. So M2 is 6 kg and U2 is 0. So after hitting, they stop together and move with the same velocity. So I'm going to have M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to um, V bracket M1 plus M2. So this is the formula for this expression. And also remember that the direction of the motion of the body was not considered because provided the body is stationary. So I'm using 5 times 10 plus 0 because 6 times 0 is 0, which is equal to V bracket 5 plus 6. So we have 50 is equal to V11. So V is equal to 50 over 11 meters per second. Okay, 50 divided by 11 is going to be 4.55. 4.55 is the correct option, and that is C. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that would benefit from it. Bye.